Venomous Snake Maintenance, how to do it safely. Subscribe now. Bangs in your face. Hey, what's happening, y'all? Hey guys, today I'm just in here working and this is going to be more of a rant than it's going to be <laughs> But anyways, Dean is going to film me while I'm working. This will kind of be uh, uh, behind the scenes today. So, get to see me hands on today with a lot of these big animals. But, um, hey, thank you, Sean Black. Big Daddy, we love you and thank you so much for all the support that you give us. Hey, and also a big thank you to Rob Rossi. Rob just sent us a new digital scale that goes up to like a couple hundred pounds. So we got to weigh two or three of our big females today. We'll kind of see where they're at in the, in the gravity stage. But, uh, but anyways, we're going to get right into it, guys. I got a lot to say today. Guys, so to start today, I've got to claim the big basiliscus. And we got to get a weight on the female. I mean, I know her weight from a few months ago, but she had copulated on let's see 219.21 so she should have a little bit of a weight gain and with our new scale we'll be able to tell that accurately but they pooped so bad that i've got to pull both of them out and do a complete clean so we got to get the mean bitch out first but uh i'm gonna pull her from this side i believe because they're both balled up in that corner over there let me see here Come on, big girl. But guys, today, you'll get to see the glamorous part of snake keeping. <laughs> All right, big girl. You see, now Maximus is chill. He's a good boy. But this one, this female, she'll bite you in a heartbeat. She will light you up. And, and when I pull a big snake, I get a loop out like this. Then I go ahead and get my hand in that loop and lift her up and then use my hook. And she's getting to be a big girl. Man, she's getting to be a big snake. That is a baby making machine right there, y'all. No. Down into the can, babe. There you go. But we'll get these animals cleaned up. And then we'll go ahead and get a weight on this big girl today. Now, Maximus. We're going to need a crane to move his ass here. <laughs> All 20 pounds of them. And we're going to stand way back and do this. He's six foot and he's got a good reach on him. And he's usually a pretty calm boy, but he's been in breeding mode, so he's been a little bit grumpy. See, and once again, I'm going to pull a loop off, grab that weight, and then use my hook to manipulate the front of the animal. Damn, he's getting to be so heavy. All right, big boy. All right, guys. Now, for the fun part. Scooping up the poop. And let me tell you what I use to do this. You'll see guys just kind of doing it with their hands. and No, I don't do that. I go get these little kitty shovels. They're perfect. They're short enough. You can work inside a cage. And they're the perfect size for scooping up feces in a cage, okay? And you ain't putting your hands in it. Because a lot of times, guys, I'm going to tell you, I don't care what anybody else says, what other YouTubers, what other snake guys say, there's fangs in that poop, okay? And you bury a fang in your finger, and you're going to get an infection. So... Oh yeah, that's a nice smell up there. Dean's <laughs> like, don't tell me that, huh, babe? <laughs> but what I want to talk about today, guys, is what's going on in our damn country with all these laws, all right? And what I see happening. And this isn't my first rodeo at this, okay? I mean, I'm originally from Ohio, and we went through this in Ohio several years back. And I moved. I left Ohio and moved down south here where I can do my work and my business without having to worry about getting shut down because I'm not AZA affiliated. 
which I will never be AGA affiliated. I like to run my own rodeo. But I'm going to tell you something. They started out in Ohio the same way. It started with the native stuff. There was a big sting in place and everything, let me tell you. I mean, they came to my house nine deep. Nine wildlife officers deep, right? And I'm not talking about they didn't show up and just knock on the door and say, um, we're here because we heard you have snakes. No, they showed up like an army, okay, with pistols out. Like, I was a, a damn serial killer. <laughs> they had to issue permits for anybody keeping anything native. And I had to go to court the whole nine yards, right? And what I was charged with was selling an albino black rat snake. Now, mind you, this wasn't a black rat snake that was plucked out of the wild. This was an albino, pure white, blue eyes, and albino black rat snake. I sold it to an undercover agent at a reptile show. And they had put this law in place without telling anybody that to keep and breed native reptiles, you have to have a propagation permit by the state of Ohio, issued by state of Ohio Department of Natural Resources. So I broke the law. So they raided my house for it. Okay? And I had timber rattlesnakes at the time. And I was keeping and breeding timber rattlesnakes, the true mountain face timber. And they seen them while they were there. And they also looked down my site online. And they seen that I kept and breed them. So they gave me a ticket for the timber rattlesnakes and for the black rat snakes. Which all my animals were captive born and bred. There was nothing taken out of the wild. I don't I don't believe in that. Okay. So I was issued a permit. I was actually one of the few people that was issued a permit to captive propagate true mountain crowless serratus, timber rattlesnakes, and which I was happy about it, but it still the, the whole kit and caboodle cost me about eight grand, okay? And when it was all said and done, it was everybody was fine for a couple of years. And then damn governor, he puts in an emergency executive order making anybody with exotics, anybody keeping exotics, big cats, crocs, bears, venomous snakes, crocodile, anything, big constrictors, deemed banned. Right then and there, turned all of us into freaking criminals on the spot, right? When he was campaigning to be voted, he swore up and down to the reptile community. No, nope, we're not going to put a ban on your animals. We're going to support that. He turned right around and lied like a freaking dog and slapped a damn ban on exotics immediately. That was how dirty this went down there. U.S. Ark stepped in, and we fought this for several years, for, for two or three years. But I'm going to tell you something. It didn't make a difference. They're going to do what they're going to do. Like I said, they turned us all into criminals on the spot, okay? And the fight was on. And, of course, I jumped in the middle of that damn fight. There were several big names in it, and, and there, there, there was people were fighting for their rights. But it didn't matter. In the long run, they did what they did. Also, guys, when I scoop my poop out, I hit that whole area, even after it's gone, with hexagons. And, I mean, and, and the thing was, you know, it wasn't... Division of Natural Resources putting this up in play. It was it was politicians. The guys from DNR, they were they were good guys. They were just doing their job. They were doing what they were told. But I'm gonna tell you something like like I became even good friends with a few of them. I mean, when they came into my facility that morning, when they raided me, I mean, they actually went and got cameras and stuff because when they walked in, and, I, and of course I treated them right. I offered them all coffee, water, Dina made a pot of coffee for the guys, and there was nine of them. I was like, why would you show up here with a force like that? I mean, they go, well, we looked at your history, and we heard, I, I go, you know what, come on in, I'll show you my facility. And we lived above our facility at this time, and we lived out in the country. And I showed them my place, and these guys were blown away. They were just like, their eyes were like this. And they had their state herpetologist with them, right? Which he couldn't tell a damn garter snake from a black mamba. He was walking around my facility going, oh, there's another timber rattlesnake. And he's pointing to a black tail rattlesnake. I'm like, no, that's a black tail rattlesnake. No, that's just, I mean, the guy didn't know anything. And he was their expert, okay? So that's what we're dealing with. That's what, that's what we're dealing with, with the government and their experts, okay? I ended up getting permits right on the spot for to cap to propagate a species under special concern, Massasauga rattlesnakes and timber rattlesnakes. 
And I ended up building a good relationship with, with DNR in Ohio. I mean, they would call me for removals. They would, they would call me for advice. I treated them politely and they treated me the same way. Gave me my permits on the spot. I mean, I still had to go to court and pay big fines for something I was unaware of. It was all a big farce to make money for the state of Ohio. With all this stuff in play now, with all these different states popping up new laws and everything, like, like the new ones here in South Carolina with the, the Tegu ban and, and the, uh, uh, the damn native reptile ban stuff, I don't disagree with that entirely. I mean, the Tegu ban, I think, silly, but protecting native wildlife, I'm all for. I can go out and catch an eastern diamondback. I can go out and catch a canebrake. I can keep as many as I want. I just can't sell them. I just can't give them away. I can't trade them. They, they took away the monetary value of the animal, which is fine with me. I don't do that stuff anyways. My stuff is all specialized. But there's other guys that do. The corn snake breeders, the king snake breeders, that breed different morphs and different things. And now they put such a hard stipulation on what you can and can't sell. It's starting to affect people's businesses. And I don't agree with that. U.S. ARC. They were back with us back then fighting. And I'm going to tell you that. You know, and they've done all they could. And I heard a lot of people say, oh, well, I donated, did this, they couldn't get... You know what? You got to understand something. This is David and Goliath, okay? USR being David and Goliath being the government. But we need to back these guys. I'm a member, and I'm going to tell you something. Like, like Phil Goss and them guys, they're doing everything they can for us. And if we don't jump on the freaking bandwagon and support these guys, we ain't going to have a voice in it. You know what I mean? Because who are you going to have be our voice in this? One of these YouTube screwballs? I don't think so. I mean, while they're free handling a cobra? Oh, that's another thing that just chaps my ass. And I'm going to tell you something. If you think they're not looking, they are. They are. Because they're going to go, okay, we got the iguana band, we got this band, we got that. Now we're going to go after Venomous. And all they do is they look at them videos and they look at all the social media and go, look, we gave them permits. We told them they can have them. This is what they do with them. It's time to ban this next. And that's what's going to happen. Watch. They're looking at that. They're looking at all of that. And they're using it as ammunition. And it's coming. It's just gotten started. Trust me. It's just gotten... I went through this already. It's just gotten started. And what's going to happen is... Next, they'll be coming after your venomous. Okay? I mean, I'm a business, I have a license, I have a purpose for breeding my animals. I supply venom labs with animals, I supply other facilities with animals. We gotta get behind USR. That's our voice. That's our voice, guys. I mean, we need that. And the thing is, it's $40 a year. And think about it, that's a couple cocktails and an appetizer when you go out on a Friday night. You know what I mean? Just to help support these guys, be our voice. But I'm getting so sick of listening to everybody crying about the laws and they're doing this and that. We brought this stuff on ourselves because we're not policing our own. We're letting everybody do all this nonsense and nobody sitting back and saying nothing about it. Well, I'm going to start saying something about it because you know what? I do things the right way. I do things the correct way. I handle my animals correctly. I've never been bitten. 37 years, 38 years, okay? And it's because I do things the right way. I have a protocol. I keep my own anti-venom. I have all locking cages. I have locking rooms. I do stuff the correct way. And then when accidents happen, oh, and there have been a few accidents in Florida here lately, okay? Don't let them guys tell you, oh, there's, there, there's no problems. No, there's been two serious bites down there just recently, okay, where free handlers getting nailed. One of them by a big cobra, another one by a rattlesnake, I believe it was. I'm privy to a little bit of that information. One guy, you know, they had to work screwy around to find any venom. Venom one didn't have enough. You know, I'm sick of it. I'm freaking sick of it. Because everybody can say, well, to each their own and that's their right. No, well, when you're doing that kind of stuff, you're infringing on my rights. My rights as a responsible venomous snake breeder. I have a business. This is my livelihood. And you goofballs doing that stuff, you're infringing on me now. It's time to stop that foolishness. I'm just so fed up with hearing everybody crying about this stuff and nobody's speaking their mind. And 
And I try to stay politically correct and think, but I'm going to tell you what, I, I, I've had it. I've just freaking had it. And I've been through this before and, and I, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it no more with, 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 with all these freaking crybabies and everybody going, well, they're taking away our rights. It's because you're not standing up and fighting for your rights. Okay. You've got to back USR. It's $40 a year. Like I said, it, it, it's a small amount to pay because there's, there's safety in numbers. The more of us, the better. Don't sit back and have everybody fight for you. That's what pisses me off. Everybody just lays in the background. No, let them do it. Let them do it. Let them fight for me. You know, it's time to get up and start fighting for yourself. Get on US Art's website and read it, okay? It talks about responsible shipping, responsible ownership, responsible handling. It's about, you know, responsible reptile keepers. And you know what the thing is, guys? I'm I'm not even, I mean, I don't like dislike free handlers and hate them. I, I, a lot of these guys love their animals and, and they're, they're good keepers. They take good care of their animals. They just don't know any better. I mean, they think that, oh, I can read my snake's body language. No, uh, yeah, you know what? You can read a snake's body language. You can determine how a snake's going to act by the way it's moving and, and by its posture, but you can't get out of the way fast enough. That's the problem. You're not going to get out of the way of a snake. It's not going to happen. We run the fangs in your face, the freaking slow-mos. We can't get them fast enough because the slow-mos are even fast. I, you're not going to get out of the way of a striking gaboon viper. You're not going to get out of the way of, of, of a venomous snake when it's in mid-flight. So while you're reading its body language and after it bit you, figure out your mistake. Okay? While I was reading its body language, I, mu I must not have seen something. No. You know it was going to bite you, but you can't get out of the way fast enough. You don't have fast enough reflexes to move from a striking snake. That's the fact of the matter. One of my best friends, uh, he's a snake breeder. He's a free handler. And I've watched him do it a hundred times. Okay? And he's very gentle. He's he's very passive with his animals. He's very... And, and, and he does read his animals and things. But he'll look at an animal certain days and go, No, today's not the day to do that with that one. I can't do it with that one today. But... This man has his own anti-venom. He's a professional. He, he's like, well, if I get bit, it's on me. And I have my own anti-venom. I'll pay my own way. I still don't agree with the free handling thing, but I'm going to tell you something. He does the right thing like that. He's got his own stuff. Just like me. I keep all my own anti-venom. I'm not going to rely on somebody else to save my life. You know, you'll spend money on caging, on expensive animals and things, but you won't put the time or effort in to get something to save your life. That's just, that's just... It, it's stupid. It's just stupid. Because it just takes a little bit of effort. Anything takes effort, nobody wants to fucking do it. I mean, it's time to step up, guys. All these events, all, all this stuff happens around an event. Like in Ohio, it started with, there was an exotics keeper. He had big cats, bears, and wolves and stuff. This was crazy, and, and, and it's a fact. He walked around and cut all the locks off of his pens, right? And let all his animals loose. And then he committed suicide which they never really could prove that it was from his own hand. So that's why the governor put that emergency executive order in place. You know who paid for it? The animals. The animals. Because they put a lot of the animals down. They killed them on sight. That man did not commit suicide. That man did not cut them locks off them, off them freaking pens. He had the keys hanging there. Why would he go through that? That's the dirty play in action. I know you're probably sick of hearing me rant about this, but... You know, this is starting to affect me, and it's, and, it, and it's starting to piss me off. If you're going to freehandle your animals, you're going to do that, you know, I, that's fine. Don't put it on social media. I mean, that, that's just about ego. That's all that is. That's a freaking ego trip. Look at me. Look what I can do. That's an ego trip. I could pull out Maximus right now and throw him around my neck, and I may get 100,000 views on this video because I did that. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. That's just ridiculous. If you're going to do it, do it in the privacy of your own home. If you truly enjoy bonding with your animal like that, don't put that stuff on social media because all you're doing is giving them ammunition. And that's going to be the next big step. All they got to do, they can pull up a hundred sites and go, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's a big YouTuber. Here's a small YouTuber. Here's these guys on Instagram. All of them like this with snakes, like they're toys. They ain't toys. You know, maybe, maybe the government's right. Maybe y'all shouldn't have them. If that's how the fuck you're going to treat them. I'm just, <laughs> I got to put Max in his back. <laughs> maybe that should be part of the, 
of the of the damn laws. You, you know, if you're going to be a venomous keeper, you should have to have your own antivenom. You, you should have to go through them steps to do that. You know, and um, all right, big boy, but. Monster. Look at the rattle on that boy. <laughs> you know, and this rattle just started growing back. Just, I mean, he lost part of it. And that's just from the last several sheds. But he's a big old boy. I raised this snake from, from he was born here. He's just a little baby. No, you don't. All right. Don't worry. We're going to put your girlfriend back in there with you in a minute. You know, guys, I don't have to freehandle that snake and get him out and toss him around and, and you know, my ego doesn't need that. You know what I mean? And that's impressive enough on its own, you know, to be able to work with an animal like that and, and keep him in captivity. But it's time to do the right thing. It's time to step up and do the right thing, not for your individuality, but for the whole, you know? Like the stuff before on Florida, it's not affecting me. You know, it's not affecting our state. But I care about the keepers down there. I truly do. I want to see everybody be able to keep the animals that they love and, and that they have a passion for, you know? I have a passion for this. This is this is a way of life for me. You know what I mean? And I know that there's guys down there that, that are that love this whole industry like I do, you know? And I feel for them, you know? And I don't want to see this stuff banned. I don't want to, I, I mean... I, I will fight tooth and nail to keep it legal. You know what I mean? And even though it, it may not affect us at all, but it's affecting me in the long run because other keepers, their rights are going to get infringed upon by a few bad eggs. You know what I mean? So, time everybody steps up, get a voice, and let's start being responsible keepers. Okay, we got... The big female basiliscus in uh, in our new weight tub, and we've already done the tear on the scale, so we'll get just the weight of the snake. And we love this new scale. It is exactly what we needed. Um, wow! Can you see it, babe? Look. Whoops. <laughs> 13 pounds, one ounce. She's bigger than I thought she was. That's a 13 pound rattlesnake. That's a big rattlesnake. No more converter. Right, we ain't got to use a converter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, awesome. So now I'll look back at my records her because I weighed her a couple months ago and I remember her being in the field of like, she was like 11 pounds. So she's, she, She's doing good. She's doing good. Okay, scale off. And now it's time to put her back in with, with Big Daddy-O. <laughs> Let me move this. Honey, I'm gonna put the scale up here. That was an awesome gift. That was so much. Thank you so much, bro. The rattlesnake day, guys. Speaking of rattlesnakes, I went out yesterday and did a little bit of... Um, I had a couple hours. I thought, you know, I'm going to go out and check out one of my tin spots. It's real close to the house here. I went out and flipped a little tin, and we found a beautiful cane break. But, uh, Dina, you can pop that little video in here, right? Yes, I you can. You can add it right into this one? Yes, I can. Yeah, let Dina add it in. Just, just a little short video of, uh, of me in the field yesterday. You know what? I'm going to have to put hands on this and use that like a shield. All right, big girl. Just reach in there and pick her up. Just reach in there and get her. <laughs> you see she's not rattling or nothing. <laughs> Just reach down there and pick her up. <laughs> she 
she's she's hook crawling on me where she's so long. She's stout, man. Good, big mom. Crawl in that. Hey, go that way. <laughs> All right. She doesn't want to breed anymore. <laughs> she's I'm tired of him, huh? He's wearing me out. They were locked up for the longest damn time. I mean, it was... It looked painful. <laughs> there we go. All right, big girl. I mean, she's a good sized rattlesnake, but when it comes to him, she looks like a she looks like a little baby. All right, we're ready to move on to our next project and our next rant. <laughs> Hey, so let's jump over and check out my little herping adventure yesterday. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey guys, I'm out in the field today. I'm at one of my little tin spots here. Not far from the house. It's about maybe 20, 30 minutes from, from my house where I live. And this one's really close to a main highway. You can probably hear all of the traffic back there. But I caught up on my snake work today and I'm out in the field today just nosing around seeing what I can find nobody home there but this piece of tin right here I know there's a big cane break under there I just watched him crawl he was sitting on top of it and he shot up under there right there so we're going to try to get him on film y'all if we can do it oh look at that isn't that neat there's a big cane break right there and a big old rat snake how cool is that them guys are sharing real estate <laughs> oh there goes the rat snake let's see if we can get our hands on this guy all right there's our rat snake and our crane cane brakes right there he's gonna backpedal he ain't going nowhere but look at the size of this damn rat snake this thing's massive Let's see if i can get him up here in the camera look at that thing <laughs> awesome all right let's get a handle on this cane brake come here buddy very cool it's hard to hold this camera and do all this at one time <laughs> But let's set him. Looks like a little female. Let's kind of set him right on top of that. Set her right on top of this tin right here. Where we can get a better look at her. Hold up right there, little girl. She hasn't shed off that winter skin yet. She's still kind of dirty and dingy. But... First cane break of the year, y'all. Oh. Come here, little lady. Let us share some time with you here. I gotta be careful, make sure there isn't another one around here. <laughs> but there it is. Our first rattlesnake of the season. I had a little bit of time today, and I'm like, I'm gonna go out and flip a little bit of tin today. A, that's a mature female she's probably about three foot she's not that big you can see she doesn't have a rattle her rattle looks like it busted off she's a little underweight she'll shed that skin and set out to hunting here soon and she's trying to make some noise look at her <laughs> see if we can move her out into the sun over here a little bit and get a better look at her come on little girl there we go not too much sun in here this is one of my cold spots actually I've got tin in here and I call this a cold tin it's where snakes usually hold up when they're in shed and that's apparently what she's been doing because she's getting ready to shed that skin. 
but that's the Crowless Heritus. Now we call them cane brakes down here down south and up north there's you know we we call them timbers but what a good start to the day a huge monster rat snake and a beautiful little female timber aka cane brake rattlesnake <laughs> She already took a pretty good poke at me, so I'm not going to get too close to her. But, cool. We're going to work through here and see if we can find another one. Well, guys, the herping trip was fun yesterday. I needed just a couple hours to go out and detune. And that's where I find my zen out there in the swamp and in the fields with the rattlesnakes and the critters. <laughs> guys, if you're... If you just keep a gecko, if you keep a damn king cobra, if whatever you keep, if it's an exotic reptile, you need to join US ARC. So we're gonna put the link and go ahead and join. Like I said, it's 40 bucks. That's peanuts, okay? And hey, and you know what? Read the alerts. They put alerts up every other day. Read the alerts on what's going on from state to state with the different legislation. Like the New York stuff, it's just ridiculous. Uh, Minnesota that I mean some of the stuff is so ridiculous and so far-fetched that I read this stuff and I'm just like I'm I'm just dumbfounded read this stuff educate yourselves if you're just a hobbyist if you're a breeder I don't care if you're a ball python breeder or if you're or if you're someone like me that breeds that breeds venomous stuff you got to get involved you got to get involved it's time to get off your hands and put up your dukes okay um, so let's get involved. Hey, if you're new to the channel, um, hit that V logo thing and subscribe now and come on back and check us out at Venom Central. I'm sorry about the rant, but I had to get this shit off my chest today. <laughs> but hey guys, um, this is Willie. We're checking out later.